Specifically, where are you at, like, with the J. Cole? Specifically, where are you at with a Drake or so on and so forth? I respect their music. I like that. For sure. I respect them uh, as individuals and creators. Like, someone yelled out Kendrick. It seems like nowadays people want to build Kendrick. Nobody yelled out Kendrick. You just heard that in your head. <laughs> no, earlier. When you go to sleep, you just hear somebody be like, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs>
So this was definitely another way to get Kendrick Lamar some more recognition. On October 22nd, 2012, Kendrick Lamar dropped his second studio album, Good Kid Mad City. This album would be where Kendrick Lamar would officially become a mainstream success, as the album sold 242,000 copies within the first week, and would be the highest first week sales for a male hip-hop artist in the year of 2012. On this album, Kendrick would return Drake the favor. On the track Poetic Justice, Drake had a feature. Everything between Kendrick Lamar and Drake seemed to be cool, until the next year in 2013 is when the beef would officially begin. On August 12, 2013, Big Sean dropped the track called Control, to which Jay Electronica and Kendrick Lamar featured on the track. On Kendrick's verse, he infamously would name drop a bunch of rappers who he worked with at the time, saying he's got love for them, but he's trying to murder them. Among those names Kendrick dropped was of course the biggest rapper in the world and someone he's worked with, Drake. After Kendrick name dropped Drake is where the beef would officially begin. ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, Jay Electron, Tyler Mac Miller, I got love for you all but I'm trying to murder you About a week later on August 25th, 2013, at the 2013 MTV VMAs, Kendrick Lamar allegedly went up to Drake and told him that it's just rap and nothing serious and actually dapped him up. Drake allegedly told Kendrick that he's not going to be cool with them after he dissed him. A couple of days later, on August 30th, 2013, Drake would do an interview with Billboard where he would finally respond to Kendrick Lamar publicly. Drake was asked his initial thoughts about Kendrick Lamar's control verse, to which he said, in quotes, I went about my day, went and got dinner, and kept it moving. I didn't really have nothing to say about it. It just sounded like an ambitious thought to me. That's all it was. I know good and well, Kendrick's not murdering me at all in any platform. So when that day presents itself... I guess we can revisit the topic. The next month, in September 2013, Drake was on a promo run for his upcoming album, Nothing Was The Same. He sat down with Elliot Wilson for an interview. During the interview, Elliot brings up Kendrick Lamar and his verse on Control, to which Drake responded once again. Like someone yelled out Kendrick. It seems like nowadays people want to build Kendrick. Nobody yelled out Kendrick. You just heard that in your head. <laughs> no, earlier. When you go to sleep, you just hear somebody be like, Kendrick Lamar! <laughs> No, but here's what's funny about you and Kendrick Lamar. It's like people forget you had him on Take Care. You had him on Buried Alive. You talked about a meeting that you guys had where you kind of were schooling him on the game. And there's a great line about how he realized he's the same age as you and he, it made him rude and impatient. So it's almost like it's very foreshadowing. You know, he ended up making a great record, Good Kid, Mad City. Just the connection. A phenomenal you, album, by phenomenal the way. Album. Phenomenal album. Yeah, round of applause. And then now he takes a competitive stance with a verse like Control. And then you, was, you said that, you know, he's not murdering you in any platform. But, you know, that's, that's where that rivalry, that's where people want to try to build. <laughs> that's if you want to try to build a rivalry. Like, what's your, what's your take on that? Do you feel like that they're trying to, they're trying to create a competition that, that he's not on your level because of your accomplishments? Like, do you feel like they're trying to hype this up and elevate it too much? Nah, I, I feel like that, that's, that's it. It's like, you know, he's in... He's the new guy to love, and of course, I mean, rightfully so. He's super talented, you know. But thank you. But he's he's <laughs> but he's like you know he is the underdog that's extremely hungry. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and he's doing his thing really well. Um, and that verse was he's giving people like moments. You know, like that that verse was a, a moment to talk about. Um, are you listening to it now? At this point in time, okay, and then, <laughs> but it was it was real cool for like you know a couple weeks, but like if I asked you for example like how does that verse start? Uh. <laughs> no, do you remember? <laughs> no, and like no, no, no. I, no, now, mind you, it'll go on and complex and rap radar give mm -hmm. it like verse of the millennium and all that shit or whatever. <laughs> but like I'm just saying, it's like. You know, um, I remember like um, somebody like asking me, you know, or maybe it was you that was like, is Kendrick Lamar your biggest competition like in this generation or whatever? Yeah. And I think that Kendrick has like the utmost potential, man. Like, you know, I see Kendrick tomorrow, I'm a dap him. I didn't feel a way about that verse. I get it. I get the moment. Like, you know, he's a good guy. And, and, and like, I know that that verse had no malice behind it because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. So it's like, he didn't come on there on some wild, like, yeah, I'm in New York, everybody don't look at me. Like, <laughs> like I'm the king. So it, it was, you know, it was, it was one of those things. It's like, I almost wish he had come in there on that shit because I kind of lost like a little respect for the sentiment of the verse. If it's really everybody, then it needs to be 
everybody. It just can't be halfway for the sake of the people. But you know what I'm saying? Like, for real, that's just how I feel. Yeah. But, but anyway, like, you know, um, I, I still like, uh, when it comes to competition, I'm just, I'm, I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about bodies of work. I'm talking about hit records. I'm talking about, tw I'm, t I'm basically talking about like, you know, there's one guy who's s s up every night thinking about how to get better and how to do things bigger. And you know, that's Kanye West. He's like, the, you know, he's like, he's always, he's always going to be, he's always going to be the guy that's trying to outthink and outdo, you know, everybody. So for me, that that would be like you know that's my that's my guy that I aspire to surpass you know what I mean and 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 as far as Kendrick goes like I can't wait to see what he does because now it's time to show and prove and and consistency is it's been one album consistency is like you need more than one album you know what I'm saying so it's like it's time to show and prove and I look forward to seeing what he does man he's fucking super talented so yeah cheers to Kendrick Lamar all yeah, right a couple days later Drake sat down with Big Boy's Neighborhood and when Drake was asked about Kendrick's verse on Control. He said that no one is still listening to it, and that it was just for shock value. Drake would then go on to say that he's not into doing a song with Kendrick Lamar. In the neighborhood, Drake Day going down right now, man. Control the record. People still banging it, man. Where Where is Drake at with Control? I'm probably, like, as done as, like, the rest of the world is with that record. Like, I think it came and it went, you know what I mean? And not to discredit it, like, it's a good, it was a good moment. But at the end of the day, it's just, like, it was, like, one of those sort of, like, fleeting, like, Twitter frenzies that, like, um, it was cool for what it was, you know? And I, I'm just into making, like, my thing is, like, I like lasting power. You know, that's my thing. I want you to still be listening to this album um, in the summer or, you know, next year. Where I want this to stay in your car, stay on your mind. It's, it's like not even about the music, you know what I mean? It wasn't even about like the content of it. It just seemed to be about like, you know, all the and all the talking at the time. And now everybody's like over it. Nobody plays it. It's just like whatever. But I think that's because it wasn't a single. And it, it did what it was meant to. It had people listening to lyrics mm -hmm. and excited about hip hop. And you and Kendrick are good as far as like the albums and doing records with each other. Did that kind of, when you heard your name, did you feel like, man, like that, that was kind of disrespectful? Did you feel like... Uh, you know, our names were just kind of thrown in there and it was... I feel like he made a decision, you know what I'm saying? And it was a decision to make, you know? He was like, man, I'm either going to go for this moment because I know it's going to be a big moment or I'm going to, like, take heed to the fact that I have real relationships and I'm going to, like, not do that. Because, um, like, you know, I'll be real. Like, I've thought of doing that before. You know, I thought, like, man, it would be crazy if I just went off on everybody. But it's just kind of like, ah, where does it really get me? Then what? Then every time I rap, people are going to expect me to be confrontational. And when I'm not, then it's not entertaining. You know what I mean? It's like, it kind of puts you in a box a bit. So I don't think that put in a box. I don't know if I necessarily respect it. You know, we all make decisions. I'm sure he'll be good. He's talented as f You know what I'm saying? He's yes, going to have another album and another opportunity to take the world by storm. So he'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? Even if it doesn't feature, you know, any of the names that he mentioned, which it probably won't, to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know who's going to go back from that and be like, yeah, let's do that. Let's, right. let's link up. And nah, you know what I'm saying? But he'll be all right. You know, he's, he's a talented dude. Does it make you like not want to collab with him? Yeah, I don't. I'm good right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just about this album and me. And, you know, I don't know necessarily if I feel like 100 percent like I'm not like man, send me some, let's work. Like, nah, not really. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm, I'm really just focused on me and, and OVO and, and my side of things. You know, I'm not really, like, into doing, like, a record with him. No. So you ain't Kendrick. You will sleep tonight. Not, not yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, that's what no, I always say. I'll, every night. That's yeah. what I say. I'll, <laughs> I'll sleep tonight. On September 24th, 2013, Drake dropped his album, Nothing Was the Same. And on this album, Drake would officially take to wax to respond to Kendrick Lamar. On the track, The Language, on the first verse, Drake takes subliminal shots at Kendrick Lamar. He starts off by saying that Kendrick's music isn't as inspiring as he says it is. Drake then says that he's the one with the motor mouth and that Kendrick should be worrying about him. I don't know why they've been lying, but your not that inspiring. I am the kid with the motor mouth. I am the one you should worry about. Kendrick Lamar, of course, caught wind of these subliminal shots, so he would respond on October 15th, 2013, during the 2013 BET Hip Hop Awards. Everyone from the label Kendrick Lamar assigned to TDE, short for Top Dog Entertainment, had their own TDE cipher. During Kendrick's verse, he subliminally dissed Drake when he referenced Drake's album, Nothing Was The Same, saying that nothing's been the same since the Control verse. Kendrick then dissed Drake further, calling him a sensitive rapper, saying he dresses in pajama clothes, and that Drake's subliminal shots will never penetrate. And nothing been the same since they dropped control and tucked the sense of the rapper back in his pajama clothes. I'm bulletproof, your shots will never penetrate. A couple months later, on December 17th, 2013, Future dropped his track, Sh Remix, to which Juicy J and Drake featured on the track. On Drake's verse, he sends shots back at a Kendrick Lamar. 
He starts off by saying that Kendrick talks like he runs the city of Compton, and that if he brings up Kendrick's name, people talk about him more. I hear you talk about your city like you're running, and if a nigga said my name, he'd have high But if I say that nigga name, he said I have shit. Two days later, on December 19th, 2013, Drake did an interview with Vibe, and when he was asked if he dissed Kendrick on the language, he said, in quotes, I don't ever want to get into responses. It's a commitment to go there. The language is just energy. What it was inspired by, I'm sure that, and other things. It's just me talking shit. I never once felt the need to respond to that record. The sentiment he was putting forth is what he should have. Of course he wanted to be the best. Where it became an issue is that I was rolling out an album while that verse was still bubbling. So my album rollout became about this thing. What am I supposed to say? Nah, we'll be buddy buddy. Mind you, I never once said he's a bad guy or I don't like him. I think he's a genius in his own right. But I also stood my ground as I should. And with that came another step. Which then I have to realize I'm being baited and I'm not going to fall. Jordan doesn't have to play pickup to prove he could play ball. No offense, but I'm not going to give you the chance to shake me necessarily because I feel great. There's no real issue. It's tough because the people want to see us tear each other down. I don't want to give them that. There's no point. I have no ill feelings towards the guy. It's just like it's there for me if I want to fall for it. I'm just too smart for that. Hopefully, it's the last time I got to talk about this because every time I open my mouth about it, they take this piece and take this piece. And he's hungry, so he's going to do whatever he has to do like the BET cipher. But again, it's not enough for me to go. We haven't seen each other, but I'm sure we'll see each other and it'll be cool. If it's not, then I guess that's how our story unfolds. The next year on August 5th, 2014, during Drake's fifth annual OVO Fest, he brought out J. Cole. During their set, Drake actually shouts out Kendrick Lamar and shows love to him. You understand? I know that sometimes they try and make it happen because they want to see it happen. But while I got you here on stage, I just want to say, and while you all got your phones out, I want to shout out my... The next month, in September 2014, Kendrick Lamar sat down for an interview with the Big Boys Neighborhood, and when they were discussing the anniversary of Kendrick's control verse, Kendrick was asked where he stands with the people he name dropped like Drake, and he said that it's still all love. Where are you with, at with a lot of the cats now, like the J. Coles of the world or, or yeah. Drake's of the world? Where are you guys at same now? Same place, same place. Mm -hmm. It's all love from the that. moment I did the verse to after the verse. You know what I mean? I think hip-hop is, is a sport, so you're going to have these little spits and spats. And it's all good because, personally, I respect these dudes as, you know, as, as people. You know what I mean? So, outside of that... It's really nothing. Specifically, where are you at, like, with the J. Cole? Specifically, where are you at with a Drake or so on and so forth? I respect their music. I that. For sure. I respect them uh, as individuals and creators. And um, I think what the media tried to do is, 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 is insane because they take these black, you know, young brothers and really try to clash it and make right. bump heads. And um, that's not right. Right, that's right. That's how I look at it. I think it's not right. I think that's why it's great to really show people how we support one another because hip-hop was something that wasn't supposed to be here for this long i'm mm -hmm. sure you know big yes sir and the more we do that the more they'll try to tear it down after this it would seem as if these two were cool and that it was just friendly competition after all but that didn't seem to be the case this beef would be reignited once again on october 29th 2014. j-rock dropped a track called pay for it kendrick lamar featured on the track and on his verse he completely dissed drake he starts off by referencing Drake's lines from the language when he says he's the one with the motor mouth. Kendrick then says that he's ending their friendship and that this isn't a warning shot. At the end of the track, he tells Drake that he can never live in his shoes, which could be a reference to Drake's line on 0 to 100, saying that the shoe can always fit. Been dissecting your motor mouth till I break down the engine. This ain't a warning shot, this a relevant henchman. Fast forward to February 13th, 2015, Drake dropped his mixtape, If You're Reading This, It's Too Late. And on the first verse of the track, Used To, he once again sends subliminal shots at Kendrick Lamar when he referenced how Kendrick dissed him on his song, Control, but then at the VMAs, he said that it was just rap. They gon' say your name on them airwaves. They gon' hit you up right after like it's only rap. The next month, on March 15th, 2015, Kendrick Lamar dropped his album to Pimp a Butterfly. And on the track, King Kunta, Kendrick Lamar once again dissed Drake. During this time, Drake was engaged in a beef with Meek Mill, to which Meek Mill would publicly expose Drake for allegedly having ghostwriters. So on this track, Kendrick directly references Drake's alleged ghostwriters. I can dig rapping, but a rapper with a ghostwriter. What the fuck can I 
that bitch. A couple of months later, on June 25th, 2015, the game and Drake dropped their track 100. On Drake's verse, he subliminally dissed Kendrick Lamar, saying that he would have all of Kendrick's fans if he didn't go pop and stuck to doing conscience rap like in his earlier days. I would have all of your fans if I didn't go pop and I stayed on some conscious sh A couple months later, on August 17th, 2015, Dr. Dre dropped his album Compton. Kendrick Lamar, of course, appeared on this album and he would clap back at Drake. On the track Dark Side Slash Gone, Kendrick directly references Drake's song Energy, saying that Drake is his enemy that's giving him energy by sending subliminals towards him. But still I got enemies giving me energy, I wanna fight now. Subliminal enemy, all of this hate. On the track Deep Water, Kendrick says that six people are gonna carry Drake in a coffin after he kills him if they start sending diss tracks back and forth, which is a reference to Drake always repping the six, which is Toronto. They lie for the bury him, they nominated six to carry him. Fast forward to June 3rd, 2016, DJ Khaled and Drake dropped a track called For Free. And on the first verse, Drake references a line from Kendrick's verse on the song By the World. This gate, this gate, this gate, this gate, this gate for free. And like your boy from Compton said, you know this gate ain't free. On March 18th, 2017, Drake dropped his project More Life. And on the track Guile Chester, Drake sent more subliminals at Kendrick, saying that he's number one in the game and Kendrick isn't. I know I said top five, but I'm top two and I'm not two and I got one, don't you have one? On March 23rd, 2017, Kendrick Lamar dropped his track The Heart Part 4. And on the second verse, he sends more shots at Drake. And he actually really went in on Drake on this verse. I'll be pun, you punk, yeah, you a scared little bitch. Tiptoeing around my name. A couple weeks later, on April 14, 2017, Kendrick Lamar dropped his album Damn. And on the track Element, he sent subliminals at Drake, saying that he won't mention him by name and that he throws the rock and hides his hand. He then tells Drake to say his name and refers to himself as the Candyman, which is a fictional horror character that is summoned by saying his name five times in a row. So Kendrick is basically telling Drake to say his name and he'll meet the Candyman. Oh, most of y'all throw rocks and try to hide your hand. Just say his name and I promise that you'll see Candyman. The original version of Element would actually end up leaking. And on this version, he actually dissed Drake. But this time, he directly name dropped him and referenced his beef with Meek Mill. Drake and Meek Mill beef might got you gassed up. But I'm a whole nother beast, I really fuck you up. The next year, on January 19th, 2018, Drake dropped the Scary Hours EP. On the track Diplomatic Immunity, he finally responds to Kendrick, saying he told him everything he knows. They try to compare us, but like a job straight out of high school, there's no you and I. I taught you everything you know. A couple months later, on June 29, 2018, Drake dropped his album Scorpion. And on the track Sandra's Rose, he takes more shots at Kendrick, saying that he walks in a godly form against the mortal man which is a direct reference to Kendrick Lamar's track called The Mortal Man. I walk in godly form amongst the mortal men. After this, Kendrick Lamar would go on a long hiatus from rap and seemingly disappeared. On December 25th, 2019, Drake did a Rap Radar interview, and during the interview, he said that he has respect for Kendrick Lamar. But yeah, I, I obviously, you know, I, I always keep my ear out for, for, for the hardest shit. I have a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for, you know, the other two guys that I'm... Um, constantly you know up against which is like cole and kendrick mm, three-headed um, monster yeah yeah so i have a lot of respect for those guys because they also continue to you know stay true to what we started started with mm -hmm. um and finding new ways to do it fast forward all the way to august 27 2021 kendrick lamar would finally make his return and in a major way on the track family ties with his cousin baby keem on this intro Kendrick Lamar says that he's smoking on top fives, which definitely could be yet another subliminal at Drake. Smoking on your top five tonight, tonight. I'm smoking on your what's the name tonight. About a week later, on September 3rd, 2021, Drake dropped his album Certified Lover Boy. And on the track Poppy's Home, he threw a subliminal shot at Kendrick, referencing his old rap name K Dot. Put him up for adoption, sign my name on a dot. Three days later, on September 6, 2021, a track with Drake and Lil Uzi Vert titled Forgot I Was Famous was previewed by a DJ in a bowling alley. On the first verse, Drake actually sent more subliminals at Kendrick, calling him fake woke and references how he put Kendrick on the map when he gave the Buried Alive track to him on Take Care. Fake woke, fake deep, you ain't no fame for me, get your ass a little sneak peek, yeah. Now you gotta take a back seat. The next year, on May 13th, 2022, Kendrick Lamar dropped his long-awaited album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. And on two of the tracks, he threw more subliminals at Drake. 
On the track Silent Hill, he takes a subliminal shot at Drake that he can't hide behind his money from this rap beef. You funny dog. Behind your money, dog. On the track Father Time, he actually name drops Drake when he references how Drake and Kanye squashed their beef in late 2021 and he says that it slightly confused him. When Kanye got back with Drake, I was slightly confused. Guess I'm not mature as I think. Got some healing to do. The very next month, on June 17th, 2022, Drake dropped his album Honestly, Never Mind. And on the track Jimmy Cooks featuring 21 Savage, on his verse, 21 Savage actually was the one to send subliminals at Kendrick when he references Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers album directly. He then says it was a team effort, possibly hinting that this is in fact a diss towards Kendrick and that he's backing Drake in their beef. Big Stepper, he came in a rose, but he left in a stretcher. Let my brother dry while I shoot team effort. Later that year, on November 4, 2022, Drake and 21 Savage dropped their collab album, Her Loss. On the track, More M's, Drake responds to Kendrick's shot on Father Time when he says that he was dissing him on his album, but it flopped because the numbers that Kendrick's comeback album did were viewed as underwhelming, especially for how much time he took to drop it. Dissing on his album and it flopped, he deserved it. The next year, on May 19th, 2023, Beyonce dropped the remix for her track, America Has a Problem, which featured Kendrick Lamar. On his verse, he allegedly sent shots back at Drake. His career didn't come with no life insurance. Hope his day one fans got some facts on him. Drake got wind of this, so that summer, Drake and 21 Savage would begin their It's All a Blur tour. On July 5th, 2023, during the opening night of the tour, Drake would announce his new album called For All the Dogs, and during this, he sent shots at Kendrick Lamar, referencing how he took five years to drop his album. <laughs> about how much music I put out, but it's like, I look around at all these faces, I know it's summertime, I gotta give you sh like, I just can't. Yeah. I don't know about these guys that go away three, four, five years, wanna chill out, all that sh that's not me. Later that year, on October 6, 2023, Drake dropped his album for all the dogs, and on the track Away From Home, it's speculated that it threw shots at Kendrick Lamar, when he referenced Kendrick's hit song Humble. I'm trying to keep it humble, I'm trying to keep it gracious. On this album is a track called First Person Shooter featuring J. Cole. Throughout this track, J. Cole decided to throw some slight jabs and mentions of Kendrick Lamar. If you don't know, J. Cole and Kendrick have been in a subliminal beef for quite some time now, so it made sense that Drake recruited J. Cole to go at Kendrick. J. Cole opens up the track saying that he's not number three or two and that he's number one, which is a reference to the big three of Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick, which a lot of people debate who the best is out of those three in the modern era of hip hop. On the second verse, J. Cole would once again bring up the big three of him, Drake, and Kendrick when he would actually directly name drop Kendrick, referring to him as his old rap name, K Dot. Love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? We the big three like we started a league. Now, Kendrick. Kendrick wouldn't respond initially. Instead, Kendrick decided to wait it out and respond back when they least expected it. Fast forward months later on March 22nd, 2024. Future and Metro Boomin dropped their collab album, We Don't Trust You. On this is a track called Like That with Future, Metro Boomin, and Kendrick Lamar. On his verse is where Kendrick Lamar would decide to respond to J. Cole and Drake's first person shooter track where Kendrick would go completely off on both of them. This was a good play by Kendrick, because during this time, Future and Metro Boomin were engaged in a beef with Drake as well, as I explained in my Drake vs Future What Happened video, which I will link in the description. Kendrick dissing Drake while collaborating with his enemies is a checkmate play here by Kendrick. Kendrick started the verse by saying that J. Cole and Drake are talking out of their necks, and tells them not to pull a coffin out of their mouth, Basically insinuating that if they diss him, it's their own funeral. These niggas talking out of their neck, don't put no coffin out of your mouth. Kendrick then directly mentions Drake and J. Cole's song First Person Shooter, basically letting them know that he hears what they're saying about him. We fuck sneak this and first person shooter. I hope they came with three switches. Kendrick then says that there is not a big three, he's the only number one, and should it be compared to Drake or J. Cole? And he also referenced how Prince outlived Michael Jackson which is a response to Drake comparing his commercial success to Michael Jackson on First Person Shooter. Mother the big three. Nigga, it's just big me. Nigga, Prince outlived Mike Jackson. Kendrick closes out the verse with a diss towards Drake, 
when he does a play on Drake's album name for all the dogs, saying that he's gonna bury him in a pet cemetery. For all your dogs getting buried, that's a K with all these nines. He gonna see pet cemetery. Two days later, on March 24th, 2024, Drake would respond to Future and Kendrick while on tour, saying that he's 10 toes down and no one can ever mess with them. A lot of people ask me how I'm feeling. I'm gonna let you know how I'm feeling. Listen, the way I'm feeling is the same way I want you to walk out of here feeling tonight about your fucking self. Cause you know how I'm feeling? I got my fucking head up high, my back straight, I'm 10 fucking toes down in Florida, anywhere else I go, and I know that no matter what, it's not a nigga on this earth that can ever fuck with me in my life. And that's how I want you to walk out of here tonight. A couple days later, on March 28, 2024, Drake posted a photo on IG where he would throw slight jabs at Kendrick and Future in the caption saying, they'd rather go to war with me than admit they are their own worst enemy. That same day, streamer Aiden Ross said that someone who was close to the situation told him that Kendrick Lamar has a diss track ready for Drake. The past couple nights, I've been going out. You guys know that. I've been going out a lot. And I've, uh, I bumped into somebody who's very who's very close on this Kendrick Drake situation. And there's a bird on the street that Kendrick already has a full on diss track ready to drop for Drake. Uh, Kendrick, I'm a fan of hip hop, hip hop. And if you're gonna diss Drake, drop that shit. That's all I'm gonna say, bro. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, let it, let it fly. If you wanna, if you wanna diss Drake, let it, you know, let it, let that, let that drop. Uh, you know, we all wanna, we all wanna, we all wanna listen to that. I know we all do, so. After that, nothing else was said, but this war is far from over. Whose side are you on, Drake or Kendrick Lamar?